If you're putting together a speech or a paper or even sometimes a report for work, you are probably getting information from outside sources, from newspapers, books, interviews, or internet sites. To be ethical, you need to be able to cite that information. You will need to learn how to use references appropriately. Today we'll focus on when you are required to use references, as well as when you should cite your sources, and then some techniques for citing those sources appropriately. The first question you're probably asking yourself is when will you actually cite your references that you were consulting when you were preparing your speech or your paper? In many classes, when you are delivering the speech, the instructor requires you to cite your references. This is the only way an audience will know if you've conducted research when you've prepared your presentation. You are also likely to be required to turn in an outline where you will identify the sources that you consulted as in-text citations or footnotes. Sometimes people ask, well, if it's in the outline, why do I actually have to say it in the speech? And that's because when your audience is listening to your speech, they don't see the outline. And then finally, as the last page of your outline, you will have a separate reference page that has all of the works that you either consulted or cited in your speech. Sometimes that's called a bibliography, but it's essentially what you've looked at and cited. Now there's a difference between a works consulted and a works cited page. A works cited page includes only the sources that you cited in the speech, not the ones that you looked at that might have been duplicative or didn't provide the information that you decided to include in the speech. The Works Consulted page includes not only those that you cited in the speech, but also all the sources that you looked at while you were preparing the speech. But this section is going to focus on what you would actually say when you're delivering the speech. You might say something along the lines of, in 2013, the International Dairy Foods Association study reported that. Notice that when you are providing your information, you are giving enough information so that we know that you've done your research, as well as that we can trust what you are presenting to us. Let's say your instructor tells you that you need to cite your sources at least five times during your presentation. You shouldn't just be sprinkling sources in to meet that requirement. The question you should ask yourself is when is the most appropriate time to quote or paraphrase information? Consider that at times you will need to establish or bolster your own ethos or credibility. If we don't know who you are, how can we trust what you're saying? You can cite your sources. A strong recommendation is to cite a source or two in the introduction of the speech so that from the beginning the audience is more likely to believe that you've done the research and that we can trust what you have to say. And this will affect how we will view the rest of your speech. If the information is startling or unusual, then you also may want to cite a source. For example, many people believe that chocolate is the most popular ice cream flavor, when in fact all the research says that it is vanilla. If you just assert that it is vanilla, the audience may question if that statement is true and then question whether the rest of your speech is true. If you are supporting an idea that people don't trust or is an unpopular idea, cite a source, preferably one that your audience respects. And finally, there are times when the material is expressed so eloquently that you couldn't say it better yourself. If you paraphrased it, it would lose its impact. So in that case, you would acknowledge the source and quote the information word for word. The next question you should be asking yourself is, what information do I need to say when I cite a source? I mean, surely you don't expect me to read page numbers or website addresses. Well, I'll ask you to put yourself in your audience's place. Analyze your audience and then ask yourself, if you were listening to this information, what questions might you have, particularly if you were skeptical of the information? Would you question how recent the information is? Perhaps America's favorite ice cream flavor is different today than, say, 25 years ago. And if you were citing statistics, the more recent the data, the better. Another question relates to source credibility. Does the audience trust the source or might they think the source is biased? If your topic is secondhand smoke, for example, would you cite the American Medical Association or the Philip Morris Company, which makes tobacco products? If your audience isn't likely to recognize the source, then you must explain that the source is qualified. Say you're doing a presentation on photography and you decided to cite Sandra Harris. If you don't tell us who Sandra Harris is, we might think that it's just your friend Sandra Harris or even your mother. However, you can easily establish her credibility by qualifying her as a credible source. Sandra Harris, former president of the California Professional Photographers Association, suggests that 
and then paraphrase what she suggests. Sometimes the information you are providing whets our interest and we might want to look up more information on the topic later. So you'd like to give us just enough information that we could perhaps go look it up. Another approach is to determine what information is the most compelling and impressive. Some of the same criteria apply, such as recency. If you're talking about a current event and you found the information that supported your points from yesterday's newspaper, you might want to emphasize how recent that information is. Oftentimes you will find the same source from different locations but one source is more impressive than another. Given a choice between citing the Sacramento News and Review and the New York Times, you should probably cite the New York Times. Similarly, if you have a choice between citing something that you read in Family Circle or in the U.S. Census, cite the U.S. Census. Let's say that you're reading an article that cites another source. In Newsweek, quoting former President George Bush, if you can fit it all in smoothly, cite all of it. Former President George Bush was quoted in the January 16, 2013 issue of Newsweek as saying, if you can't fit it all in, then include the information that is the most compelling. In January of 2013, former President George Bush said that would be more compelling than Newsweek. Anything that we think the audience might find to be either interesting or will best support your point, that's what you want to include. When researching, you will discover all kinds of information, and oftentimes the same information will be found in several sources. I did some research on ice cream, and I found all of these sources identified vanilla as the most popular ice cream flavor. Which is the most credible for you? For example, Travis Rothwell's homepage. I have no idea who Travis Rothwell is. He may be an expert on ice cream, but I can't tell based upon this information. Perhaps he's a chemist or an expert judge of ice cream competition. If he is, then that's great and you should qualify him as a source when you are presenting your information. But if he's not, I'm sure that there are other sources that your audience would probably perceive as more credible. If I wanted to cite the International Ice Cream Association or the IICA, I found that information in MakeIceCream.com. If I can't find the original publication, which is my first choice to go back and find the original source, I would then cite in my speech the International Ice Cream Association as the source. However, on the outline in bibliography, to be completely ethical, I would identify the source as MakeIceCream.com. If I were listening to your presentation and you cited ScienceNewsForKids.org, I would feel insulted. This is not an appropriate source for a college audience, but if you were delivering a presentation to children, it would probably be an excellent source. Wikipedia is probably one of the most overused sources and is not always accurate. Please do not cite Wikipedia in a speech or in an academic paper. You could turn to Wikipedia to get general background information, but then look for more credible sources to cite in your presentation. And a good place to start is the reference section at the end of a Wikipedia page, which often have links to the original source. The bottom line is that you need to choose the appropriate source and information depending upon your audience as well as the situation. Now that you have your sources and you know which ones are the most credible, it's time to consider how to smoothly incorporate your sources in either a speaking or a writing situation. First, please avoid sloppy wording such as, I got this from a book or I found this on the internet. I actually heard a student providing the information, pause, and then just list the source not very smooth. In fact, it was really annoying. Also stay away from overused wording such as according to. Now this is okay once in a while, but it gets redundant and boring if you introduce every source citation with according to. Instead, try to be a little bit more creative. Well-known inspirational speaker Anthony Robbins agreed when he wrote in his best-selling 2001 book Awaken the Giant Within, and then you provide the quote. It contains all the pertinent information and doesn't say according to. Or, Benjamin Franklin is often credited as saying, and then give the quote from Benjamin Franklin. Now in this particular situation, no date is given as it's not relevant to the quotation. Besides, most of us know the general time period that Benjamin Franklin was around, and we also don't need to qualify Benjamin Franklin as a source because the audience is most likely familiar with him. You can also paraphrase rather than quote everything word for word. In fact, if you try to remember it word for word, that's likely to throw you off in a speech. You're concentrating so much on the word order when in fact it's more important that your audience really understand the idea than the exact words. Let's break this down a little further. 
How would you actually organize a source citation into your speech for your paper? One method is called the Claim Source Support or Claim Source Data method. In this case, you make a claim in your own words, and then you need to provide the information to support that claim, including the source of the information and then the support or the information itself, what the source said. Let's use public speaking as an example. I could make the claim that many of us would rather die than give a speech in public. What would help you believe this claim? If I cited research or used an example to back it up? Let's do that. I'll identify the source. In fact, in 1973, the Sunday Times in London reported, and then what the source said, that more people report that they fear public speaking than fear death. I can provide additional data to support the claim because you're probably wondering if data gathered in 1973 is still valid today. I can add a qualifier, for example, that says, this survey has been verified countless times throughout the years. It would, of course, be even stronger if I cited the results of those surveys. I could go further still. I can use claim, source, support, source, support, meaning I provide two pieces of evidence to back up my claims. So I could say something like, many of us would rather die than give a speech in public. In fact, in 1973, the Sunday Times in London reported that more people fear public speaking than fear death. That survey has been verified countless times throughout the years, leading comedian Jerry Seinfeld to suggest that at a funeral, most people would rather be in the casket than delivering the eulogy. Okay, now granted, Jerry Seinfeld might not be the most qualified source on the subject, but adding that information adds a little more color and can make the speech a little bit more interesting. How do you actually deliver it in a speech? It's one thing to write a quote down, but a completely different thing to say it out loud. First, let's talk about what you should avoid doing. Don't use the word quote or end quote to set off your quotation. Also, don't wriggle your fingers to set off the quote. The only time you should use the quote, end quote, or wiggle your fingers is to indicate that what you are saying is what the other person said word for word and is completely ludicrous or that the person is lying or ignorant. If you're quoting word for word, Pause a bit both before and after the quote, and then make a subtle change in your voice so that we can tell that the words you are saying are not your own, but someone else's. It gets really boring to hear somebody said something all the time, so what are different ways that you could say someone says or said something? Suggestion is to look to your resources. Perhaps you can look at a thesaurus or a book of synonyms and antonyms, so be creative. Could you say somebody responded, replied, reported, indicated, demonstrated, cautioned, warned, sounded a warning? There's so many different ways that you could say someone said something without using the word said. Quiz time. When should you cite your references? What role, if any, does the audience play in selecting appropriate references? Other than according to, how else could you introduce a source citation? And what specifically should be included when citing a source? Now you know that whether in a speech or a paper, you can cite your sources smoothly. You can provide your audience with all the important information as well as being creative in the process. That will help make for a more believable and ultimately more memorable speech or paper.